So let's have a look at copyright and software, which is really what the uh, four of us are into on a daily basis. This is our profession to do software. So software is created, it's written, so therefore it, it is copyrighted. So whenever something is written, it's copyrighted. I guess it's copyright does not only uh, apply to written words, but but to all creative work. And uh, writing is if it's a creative, uh, create something creative you do, then then yes, copyrighted. And if you just still write, but you're not uh, creating something new then it's obviously not uh, copyrighted because someone so, else has the copyright. If you, exactly. copy so if you copy something, even if you do it by writing, it's, it's not copyrightable by you. So in software, we usually, or we should, I, I should say, the, we should somehow mark that we have the copyright. So in my case, I'll probably write something like this. Uh, it's a comment, it's a source code comment. We can see that on the left side. And then I'm using the um, plain ASCII here. So the C to mark copyright and then the years. And then the author or the creator, that's me in this case. And then an email address. You don't have to have an email address, but we, we let's discuss that for a while. So would you agree that this is okay? I yep. uh, I'm thinking about the the year here. You have two different years. Would you does it mean that like you started it in seventeen, and then you amended this file in twenty, or what does it mean here? Yeah, and you can read a lot uh, on the internet, and I've spoken to quite a few lawyers, and most of them like this way, and we. They they prefer not to have ranges like 2001 to 2020. The mm. important thing here is that it you mark the last year. So since this file here, assuming that there is a file, but uh, then the copyright expiration is starting from 2020 and onwards. So why so do I have the 2017 there? What uh, for history? Okay, okay. And I guess it's it's common practice to list the years in which you made a release, sort of. Yeah, and uh, so, but we can discuss that. So a lot of people say that you, you could use Git to keep track of the years, and sure you can. But how about if you make some kind of release and then you zip or tar zip something, and but then the Git history is gone. So don't. I would say don't use Git to keep track of the years. Put it in the uh, header section somewhere. So it's easy to see when the copyright expires and who has the copyright. I think if, uh, what I did or sometimes do is that I find something, some uh, uh, software which I don't quite can use in uh, as a whole, but I can totally reuse like one class from it instead of rewriting it i just copy it and then it's nice if if you have this header in that one file because then kind of, then it goes with with me uh, to to the to this new project which i'm working on yeah sure and also in git it's it's hard to see who wrote the code and who committed it it's easy to see who committed the code, but perhaps not who wrote it. So why email in the copyright? You, you don't have to do that. Uh, so, But it, it's easy. To, if you have like legal or technical questions, it's good to have the email address there. It's do, the, do you need to have some way to contact you, or is it enough just to have the name? No. Uh, for me, working with compliance a, bit, uh, a lot, uh, as late as... Like six hours ago, um, I looked up an email address and I will contact the person because there is some conflict in the... Uh, it's basically an envelope license problem. So it um, there is a license. Um, the, the project is stated to be licensed on this and that, but the source code says another license. We haven't dealt with licenses yet, but then I need to have a contact email address. 
So, so it's, but the, the reason to have the email address there is for you as a user to be able to sort of clarify things rather than uh, than a requirement for you to to sort of be contactable. It's more convenient yeah. to actually make sure that something is being used and then that it, there is a way to clarify these inconsistencies. Yeah, so it's for the user of the software. It's it's for for the ones who use my software. Then it's easier for them to know how to contact me. I mean, you get the copyright anyway, as as you said before. Copyright is automatic, so this is just for to help out. Absolutely, absolutely. The one thing that I found interesting in is who gets copyright on the code I write at work. And it's not clear at all. And if I write the code as part of my job, regardless of where I am or where I write it or at what time, but if I write some code as part of my job, then it's actually my employer who gets the copyright. This depends on where you are, though, doesn't it? Like in, in which jurisdiction you are. Yeah, I would say uh, I'm not that good in American and, and, and the British law, but in, in German, Sweden, etc., then it's usually this way. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Swedish copyright law has a special clause for writing software as part of your job. Yeah. Another thing relating to this is if I write code at work in my office, paid by, uh, on, on a computer, paid by my employer, but I'm writing some kind of uh, adventure game for an Android app or whatever, then actually it's not copyrighted to my employer, but it's copyrighted to me, which is kind of odd. But the important thing to take out from this is that this is so, so complicated that we solve this. So it, it's, it's not a problem. So we usually solve it by a contract between the employer and the employee. So usually... It's giving the employer all the copyright. It's something to be aware of when you sign an employment contract, especially if you if you work, for instance, with open source, uh, to to clarify this. It's there. There is no right and wrong, but it, it it's important to understand that it has implications. Yeah, and I remember one of the uh, I've been a consultant for for most of my working years, and. I was about to, or they asked me to sign such a contract, and I, I refused. I'm not going to say the customer, and I refused, and it went up to the <laughs> management, and uh, the the deal was that if, if I keep quiet about it, which I'm not doing at the moment, if I keep quiet about it, it's going to work. But don't 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 mention that you haven't signed it. Uh, and then my answer to them was, <laughs> well, you need to sign a paper that whenever I write on my software at your computer, then the copyright is, belongs to me, and they actually sign it. Oh, my God. But now you're not keeping quiet anymore, right? So. I'm not saying this, <laughs> am I? So it, but but it, it's, it's, on the, uh, it's in the contract, and this makes things a lot easier. So software is written, you know, and thereby it's copyrighted. So no one can use my software. That's a bit of a problem because it's copyrighted. So if I, if I release my software, then you can't use it. Wait, when you release it? Yeah, even if you release it, you still have uh, exclusive rights. Yeah. Yeah, that's but a bit of a teaser, it... putting it out and saying, ha ha. <laughs> But but uh, does it have something to do with like a binary release versus a uh, uh, source code release, or is it something completely different? The copyright law applies to both the binary and the source code. So basically, no one can use my software since it's copyrighted to me. And that's a bit of a problem. So we we have to solve this somehow, and the, the solution is for the next lecture. It's a license. So we need to loosen up the uh, copyright a bit. Well, um, to be clear, we're not losing, loosening up the copyright. We're just uh, loosening uh, up the, the rights to, to use and so on, right? You would yeah. still have the copyright even with the license. Yeah. Absolutely, you're absolutely, you're right. And yeah. uh, in, 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 in German law, for example, it's a contract. The license is a contract. 
uh, in Swedish law. I, I'm not sure if it's decided. Uh, I, I've tried to read up, but uh, I'm not sure whether it's a contract or something else. But it's it's a legal construct to make it possible to use the software somehow. But that's for another day. So I, I think it's about time to end.